Okay, so we're going to start in mountain pose. And Morgan, since you don't have familiarity with mountain pose, pay attention because this is the basic standing posture. And if you don't learn anything else in yoga, this is what you want to learn. So pick up your toes so that you can feel the base of your toes all the way across. And then spread them out as you put them down, but don't grip with them because that raises up the base of your toes and gives you less support. So you want to be lifting through the arches so that the whole outside of your foot comes into contact with the floor and your whole heel area and base of the toes is fully connected with the mat. You want your feet about parallel to each other, kind of the outsides of your feet parallel to the outsides of your mat. And you want the hip bones right over your ankle bones. So ankles, knees, and hips are all lined up, and then your shoulders above that. And as you breathe, you want to draw the breath into the lowest part of your lungs, letting your belly expand as the lungs fill and the diaphragm drops. And as you exhale, just let it sink in. Keep everything aligned, and then think about pulling your bottom ribs toward your spine and up so that core gets activated to support your spine. And then sinking down into the feet evenly, reach up through the crown, the very top of your head, and relax your shoulders. And just let your arms hang however they do at your side. And just focus in the breathing and remembering always that that internal perspective on the breath and what your body is doing is your yoga perspective. So you want to be paying attention at all times to what's going on internally through your body. So keep that mindfulness as you breathe, drawing energy and awareness into that lower lung area, belly expanding as the diaphragm drops. And as you exhale, just let it go, all the breath exhaling. And with the inhalations, bring your awareness inward. And with exhalations, just release any tension. And get ready to be in your yoga frame of reference, which means in your body, in your practice, doing what's right for you. So yoga is a personal practice. It means do what's right for your body. Don't overdo. Don't try to replicate anybody else's practice. And we're going to inhale and bring the arms up to shoulder level. Extend way up through your fingertips, up through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart with your elbows just a little back so you keep the heart open. And then inhaling, stretch your arms straight out in front. And as you exhale, bring the hands behind you, clasp your fingertips, and press the hands toward the floor as you look overhead and expand across the heart. Breathe in. And on an exhalation, pivot over and come into a forward bend. So bring your hands up toward the ceiling as you do that. Kind of tick, tuck your chin in toward your chest and get the back of your neck stretching. And lift the sitting bones, the bottom of your body, up toward the ceiling. And get a good stretch through the legs, through the back. And then with your knees a little bit bent, lift your ribs toward your spine. Drop your sitting bones toward the floor to keep your chin tucked in. And slowly wind your way back up to standing. And as you get to the top, look overhead and expand across the heart as you push your hands down toward the floor so you really feel that opening across your chest. And then inhale to the top. Exhale your arms back to your sides into mountain pose. And just feel your spine, all the circulation and increasing energy flowing. Keep the breathing full and deep and just feel how your body responds. And again, as you inhale, reach your arms wide. As you exhale, bring your hands again to your heart. Stretch your arms straight out to the front, keeping your shoulders down. And exhale, clasp your fingertips behind you the opposite way, so other finger on the outside. And again, lift your heart, stretch your back. All the way up to the crown. 
And then exhale and pivot oh. over. You can turn off your camera. Oh. Relax. And turn to Well, oh, we muted though. Keep breathing. Oh. Jessica, you yeah. unmuted. Can you mute? And just take a moment to breathe. So lifting your ribs, dropping your sitting bones, slowly work your way up. And again, chest high, hands towards the floor, relax your shoulders, stretch your spine. And on an inhalation, bring your body back upright into mountain pose. And then staying in mountain pose, we're going to do a couple of other things to work your spine. So we're going to do lateral motions next to the spine. Again, inhale, bring your arms out to the sides. Turn your palms up toward the ceiling. Bring your arms right over your shoulders. Now bring your hands past each other and then turn the palms around and clasp them. And pull your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, shoulders down, and lean over to the side and get that rib area opening along the side of your body as you stretch the spine in its lateral side to side motion. So make sure that your top shoulder is pulling a little bit back so you're not coming into a twist. And then inhale back to the top, switch your other hand in front, and again, Pull your arms back by your ears, sitting bones and shoulder blades down, and lean to the opposite side. So just stretch out that side of your body, breathe into those ribs. Make sure that your whole body is straight facing forward. And again, inhaling, come back to the center. Release your hands and bring your arms back to your sides. Take a moment feeling how that side of your body is a little bit more stretched out. Maybe the ribs feel a little bit more energized as well as your spine. So the sixth positions, fifth and sixth positions are the twist positions for your spine. So we're going to do those next. So on this and any other twist that we do, you want to keep the spine stretching apart so it's got a good range of motion for your twist. Inhale, arms are reaching out to the side. Again, turn your palms up toward the ceiling, arms right over your shoulder. This time, clasp your elbows, pull them back behind your ears, shoulders down, sitting bones down, and crown stretching up. And then as you exhale, turn to a twist position either direction. Keep your knees a little soft, keep the weight on both feet evenly. Stretch up as you breathe, and as you exhale. Slowly work your way. Come back to the top. Pull your elbows back. Look slightly overhead. Be very gentle in your low back. You want to twist um, and back bend in the upper body more than the lower back. And then inhale to the top. Exhale to the center. And switch your arms around. Again, sitting bones down. Crown high. And exhale twist the other way. Lengthen up, breath in, hip over as you exhale, and just relax into that forward bend. So allow your body to deepen again as far in that position as you like. See if you can keep your weight on both feet evenly. And just relax. Deep breath. Exhale, tension. And then keeping your arms still by your ears, staying in the twist as you come back up. Again, look overhead as you get to the top, lifting your heart, being careful with your lower back while you're in the twist and going into a little back bend. And then inhale upright, exhale back to the center. Bring your arms straight up, pull them out to the sides, palms down. 
and then lead with your chin and your chest, just pivoting forward. Keep your back as flat as you can till you're parallel to the floor. And then just again, drop into ragdoll and relax. If you like a stretch on your lower back, you can pull your arms behind your legs, pull in a little deeper in that lower back area. Tuck in your chin. And then as you exhale, release your arms down. Slide your hands up your shins right under your knees. Press the palms into your shins. Pull your chest and chin forward. And again, flatten your back into that halfway up stretch through the spine. Relax your arms down and bring them out right at shoulder level. And then as you pivot up, keep them at shoulder level. So you should be in T position as you get to the top with your Shoulders pressing down. And then bring your arms overhead, palms together, and exhale, bringing them to your heart. And then release into mountain pose. Just take a moment and feel how your spine is more energized. So we've worked it in all six positions, forward bend, backward bend, side to side, and twist. So let that spine feel energized and open. Take a breath. And we're going to do a standard yoga position called triangle position. So separate your feet. They can be as wide apart as you would like. The official realized pose is the inseam length of your leg is the same distance as between your ankle bones. So if you don't want to do it quite that wide, you can be a little bit narrower. It's just up to you how wide you want it. If you keep your heels at or near the back edge of your mat, that helps to make sure that you keep your body in a straight line. And for triangles, you want to keep your shoulders and your hips facing the front at all times, even when we move our legs. So we're going to do a very basic version first, Morgan. And it's just a way to get the idea that you keep your arms straight across from each other. So bring your arms again out to shoulder level, palms down. Keep stretching out through the top of your head and your fingertips. And we're going to do the fixed wing aircraft version. So you're just going to twist, or tip rather, not twisting, keeping your body facing the front, and keep the arms right across from each other as you come into that sideways motion. And then pivot back up, keeping those arms right across from each other. And then again, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, whole body facing forward, tip the other way. Again, keeping those arms right across from each other. So if you find that one arm's going down more, bring it back to shoulder level. You want to keep everything straight as you tip to the side. Your arm does not ever have to get to your leg in the triangle. <clears throat> Excuse me, then pivot back up. Exhale and release your arm. <coughs> so take a moment and let me get a drink of tea. So that version of the triangle is the beginner version. And we're going to go on to the second version, which is a little bit more complicated. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to move our feet. So as we move our feet while we keep our arms extended out, the important thing to remember is to keep your shoulders and your hips still facing the front. Now, the problem most people have with triangle is when they move their feet, they want their body to go the same direction as their foot is turning. If that's your issue, just keep in mind that your body is between two planes of glass, and you can't do that with your upper body. You're only going to move your legs. So inhale your arms back to shoulder level. And then turn one foot to the side without turning your shoulders or your hips. So all the way 90 degrees. So it should be facing 
along the side of your mat. The side of your foot should be along the side of your mat. And then the foot and back, the heel goes back and the toes go forward so that if you bend your knees, your knee is going the same direction your toe is going. So your whole leg turns, not just the lower part of it. And then again, we're going to do the fixed wing aircraft version. So turn your palms to the front and pivot and keep the arms right across from each other. Both legs stay straight in the triangle. And you want to just make sure that your body is facing forward, not turning to the side. And then again, as you inhale, pivot back up, turn the palms down and the feet back to the front. This is called the energized star position. So feel like from your heart, you're reaching out through your fingertips, through the feet, through your head. And then exhale and release your arms. Take a moment, check the positioning of your feet. You want those outsides of your feet, again, to be parallel to the sides of the mat. So you don't want your feet sticking out or pivoting in. You want them straight ahead. And of course, in yoga, we always balance the body and do things both sides evenly. So we're going to do the triangle to the opposite side. So again, bringing your arms up, breathe in. And then keeping your body facing the front, Turn your other foot all the way to the side, 90 degrees. Again, the outside of the foot parallel to that back of your mat. Heel back, toes forward on that foot behind you, but keep your body facing the front so your whole thigh pivots along with the rest of the leg. And again, palms to the front. Keep the body facing forward as you pivot one arm down and the other one comes up. Keep breathing and just reach out through your fingertips through the top of your head. And then inhaling, pivot back up, turn the palms to the front floor and the feet to the front. Energize your star and release your arms. Take a moment to feel what your body is telling you about that practice. Now, we're going to do the official version of triangle next. It's a little bit more complicated, so just pay attention to what your body is doing and what my words are saying and try to replicate that as effectively as you can. So again, the sides of your feet start parallel to the sides of the mat. You're as wide apart as you feel is appropriate for your body. And inhale, arms reaching out at shoulder level. Once again, we're going to turn the feet the same way. So keep your body forward. Turn your one foot 90 degrees all the way to the side, parallel to that back of the mat, and then heel back, toes forward on the back foot. Now, we're going to use that crease at the top of your thigh where the thigh meets the hip joint, and we're going to pull that back. And as you do, reach your arm way, way forward, keeping those arms right across from each other. Palms to the front again, and the pivot one more time. So fixed wing aircraft arms, whole body facing forward. If you need to, kind of pull that top shoulder a little bit back. You can go all the way to your leg if you've pivoted far, far enough to the side. Or you can just be wherever you are. If it's uncomfortable for that arm to be hanging, you can have a block or some support underneath your arm. So again, keep your arms as much right across from each other as you can while you're in that position. Keep that top hip kind of pulling back so that you're not leaning forward, which is the most typical ineffective position for triangle. And then again, arms right across from each other, pivot back up. Palms toward the floor, feet to the front, get your star position, and release. Take a moment, feel what your body is telling you. Notice how that felt a little bit different from the first two versions. And we're going to do it to the opposite side to balance the body. So again, inhale the arms up, reach out. Turn your other foot 90 degrees. Keep the body facing the front, those arms parallel to the floor. Heel back, toes forward. Keep that back hip pulled back. 
so that the whole body still is facing front. Now, once again, push, push, push with the front arm, getting that pivot right at the top of the side, not up at your waist. Palms to the front, and again, keeping those arms across from each other, pivot on over into your triangle as deeply as you want. Keep that whole side of your body up toward the ceiling, breathing, just reaching those arms away from each other, reaching the head out, Breathe and relax as much as you can. And again, inhaling, coming up, palms to the floor, feet to the front, reach it out, and exhale the arms and step back into mountain pose. Take a moment and breathe and just feel your body how it feels after all that grounding work in the triangle. Feel your heart center, a little bit of opening with all those extended arm positions that we've been working. And feel your hips because we did work them a little bit as we were working into the triangle. So just observe how your body is responding this morning and allow yourself to breathe. And because we're only doing a half hour, we're gonna bring the arms out palms toward the ceiling, look overhead and let the hands meet. As you exhale, bring your hands down all the way to the mat and come into child's pose. So child's pose, you kneel on your legs and bring your hips back toward your heels. Hands are next to your feet, palms up and pivot forward and bring your forehead close to the mat or to the mat. As you come into your forward bend in the child's pose, you can do one of two things. If you like the lower back to get a good stretch, keep your knees together. If you don't like that, you can separate your knees and it'll be a little bit easier on your lower back and it lets your lungs expand a little bit more if you've got any constriction in that chest when you have your chest on your knees. Couple other things if they're uncomfortable. If your ankles are uncomfortable, you can put a little padding there. If your quads or your knees are uncomfortable, you can put a little padding between your heels and hips or your thighs and calves. It's up to you how far and deep you go into that position. If your head doesn't get to the floor comfortably, you can also put a pad or a block in front of you for your head. And you can just breathe there and relax. You may, if you'd like, stay in child's pose for the relaxation, which we're going to do next, just to get your body and your body and your mind to allow that whole yoga practice to gel in your, in your practice. Or you can come into corpse position, which is the typical relaxation posture. So if you do that, just turn over and lay down on your mat. Feet up toward the ceiling. Just relax through the lower back. Let that connect a little bit into the mat. Hands, palms up slightly away from your hips. Shoulders relaxing down into the mat. And just allow your neck and head to comfortably relax into the mat as well. And then as you're in either child's pose or corpse position, relax everything in your body. So kind of scan through your body, arms, hips, legs, everything just softening and relaxing, allowing your body to deepen into that connection beneath you, letting the earth move support you as it does every day. So just allow your body to soften and sink, let it grow heavy, close your eyes, focus inward, and breathe deep. All the way to the lower lungs, exhale, let the breath go. Just allow your body to grow deeper into that earthbound connection. 
relaxing all your muscles, just allowing everything to release. And as your body releases, just allow thoughts about your body to release from your awareness. And as other thoughts come to your mind, and they will, let them go as well. Any thought that comes to you is just going to be unimportant at this moment, so let it go. No need to remember the past or think about your yoga practice. No need to anticipate the future or think about what's going to happen next time you practice yoga or whatever you're going to do the rest of the day. Just let the thoughts drift in and without attention, let them drift out again. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. And at this moment, you can just let every thought go without attention, keeping your awareness only on the breath and the peace within. Just allow your cellular memory of your practice to build. Allow the synaptic connections of your yoga practice to build without paying a bit of attention to what's going on internally. Just breathe deep, feel the peace, and let it grow in you, filling your body, filling your mind, just being peace. And then if you'd like to remain relaxing a while longer, feel free to do that. If you're ready to release, bend your knees and draw your heels up toward your hips. Draw energy and awareness back into your body. And then draw your knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around. Give yourself an appreciative yoga hug, letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work it does for you every day. And when you've had a good stretch, allow yourself to release, roll over to the side, support with your hands to sit back up, and get ready for the rest of your day. So thanks for joining me.